This week, find out how to take point data from METARs, grid it, and make contour plots like this one. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I wanted to take a look at METARs, which we've looked at decoding before, but instead we're going to take those observations, decode them, and then interpolate them so that we can make a contour plot of them. There are a few gotchas in there as you're going along, and it's worth having somebody show you some of the places that you'll probably hit trouble. So of course, we're going to start out with imports. We're going to have to get the data, so for that we're going to use Siphon. So from siphon.catalog, we're going to import the threads data server catalog object. From metpy.io, we're going to import the parse metar file. We're going to import cartopy since we're making maps. The coordinate reference system as CCRS. Cartopy.feature as C feature for our state and country outlines. And of course, matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And we're going to use our matplotlib inline magic. So the first thing that we need to do is actually get that METAR data and decode it. We've covered this in a previous MetPy Monday, so we're just going to go over the steps here and not too much into detail on any of them. I'm going to create a catalog object for our threads data server catalog. And the METAR data are hosted on the threads test server. So I'm going to grab that catalog URL. Again, we go over how to do this and what all of it means in our parsing METAR video. And we're going to change the HTML extension to XML. Again, Siphon will do that for you, but you'll get a warning. So we might as well go ahead and get ahead of that warning. Now we're going to get the data set. And I happen to know that we need to get the next to the last data set. We want the most complete, so say previous hours observations. And if we look at that data set, there we can see when that was. So now we need to download that file. So I'm going to say ds.download because right now you do have to bring this file down locally for everything to work. And then with MetPy's parse metar file function here, we can just pass the data set name, which will also be the name of the file on disk, and let it churn. So that's going to go for just a little bit while it's going through that giant text file, and now we have our metars. So if I look at the head of this pandas data frame, there we see all of the normal things we would expect, the station, latitude, longitude, and so on. But let's say that I want to make a plot, a contour plot, of one of these fields, and I'm going to choose the altimeter setting. Well, we're not going to be able to make a contour plot because this is not a gridded field. And there are many interpolation methods, but you could fake it out by, say, using a scatter plot. So let's show how we might do that. First, we're going to go ahead and set up some projections. My map coordinate reference system is going to be ccrs.lambert.conformal. This is what we have used in the last several mapping examples. And our central longitude is going to be minus 100 degrees. Our central latitude is going to be 35 degrees. And our standard parallels will use the 30 and 60 degree parallels. We also need to set up a data coordinate reference system. You saw lats and lawns, which means what? Yeah, of course, it's in plat Cree, or just plain lat lawn. All right, so now we can make our figure. So plot.figure gives us our figure with a fig size. In this case, I'm going to use a 
10 by 5. Create an axis with add subplot off my figure object. One row, one column, first axis. And I'm going to specify that the projection is my map coordinate reference system. And then I'm going to set the extent to a rather pleasing view of conus. So that would be minus 130, minus 72 longitude, and 20 to 55 latitude. Don't forget, we need to specify that those are in plat curie, which we called our data CRS. I'm going to add a feature from C feature. I'm going to use the coastline. I'm going to use the width scale here to do the 1 to 50 million scale. We'll do the same thing for states. And finally, we can get to plotting our data. So from our data frame, it's going to be longitude, latitude, and you might be tempted to type altitude, but remember it's altimeter. And that's what we want to color our scatter points by. So I'm going to set the C quarg to be equal to altimeter. And we need to specify our transform which is what the data are in, which are our data CRS. And there we go. You can see there's not a lot of uh, variation shown here. So we could set something like our Vmin to be, let's say, 28, and our Vmax to be 32. And we're getting a little bit more variation there. So we could play with these numbers, but again, it's not really showing me what I want, which are contours of that value. So how can we do that? Well, first, I need to make sure that I get rid of anything that doesn't have a Latin long, because it's not georeferenced, and I'm not going to be able to deal with it. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and throw out anything that doesn't have an altimeter setting as well. So I'm going to use the drop in A from pandas. I'm going to specify at the subset or the things that I have to have are latitude, longitude, and altimeter. All right, so that gets rid of any rows that don't have all three of those. From metpy.interpolate, we're going to import interpolate to grid and remove NAN observations. Yes, we just did that with pandas, but it's always good to go ahead and run that just to make sure your data are clean and your interpolation won't fail. On a small data set like this, it may not be a big deal, but it is really unpleasant if it happens to you on a large data set. Now I'm just getting our longitude and latitude values. Remember the dot values pulls it out of the pandas data series structure. And now I'm going to transform the longitudes and latitudes into map coordinates. So I can do my interpolation in map coordinates. So the X projected and the Y projected versions of my coordinates. And then we're going to throw anything else away that's getting returned here. I'm going to use my map coordinate reference system the transform points method that hangs off of it. I want to transform from my data CRS to my map CRS, lawn and lat, and then I'm going to transpose what comes back so it's in the order I expect, x, y. And again, that didn't take very long, but this is a pretty small data set. Now we're going to go ahead and make sure that we don't have any NANs that are still hiding in our data. So X masked and Y masked for masked arrays. Our altimeter setting, we're going to use that remove NAN observations function with our X, Y, and the data, which is altimeter dot values. 
Finally, we're ready to do our interpolation. So our altimeter gridded X, our altimeter gridded Y, and our altimeter gridded data, or interpolated data, are going to all come from the interpolate to grid function, which is going to take our X masked, Y masked, the altimeter data, and we can specify an interpolation type. Uh, linear is kind of pointless because we can get that many places. So I'm going to use Cressman. And you see that takes not very long to run at all here. But again, if you had a larger data set, that's where you want to go ahead and work on a small set until you get your code all tuned in. And I save myself a little bit of typing. I'm going to grab my plot code from up here and we'll just modify it. I'm going to make this a little bit larger. I didn't like how small that last map was. Everything is going to stay basically the same except here instead of scatter I'm going to use contour and we get rid of what's in here and we use our altimeter grid X, our altimeter grid Y, and our gridded altimeter data. I'm going to specify some levels and see probably somewhere from, we can be overly generous here, let's say 26 to 32 inches of mercury in 0.02 inch increments. And the colors will just make all of the lines black. Finally, I want to use labels so I know what the contours are. And for that, we need a handle to the contour, so I'm going to call it C and set it right here to get a handle. Now we see that we didn't have NumPy for our A range. So I'm going to go ahead and import NumPy. And now we have our map of current altimeter settings. So you can see right now we've got a nice uh, storm system that's moving through the plains, bringing all kinds of very early winter weather. We can see that pronounced here in the altimeter settings. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MapPy Monday.